Welcome to Men, Relationships, and Other Fables, where you find thought-provoking conversations and insights that transform. Please, please, please welcome our host, Nicole W. Hey, everyone, thanks for being here. We learn and grow from those who have done the work and manifested phenomenal success in business and in life. Today I have Felipe, the philosopher, prophet, and poet. Felipe has performed in the field of music and movies for over 20 years. Starting as a Michael Jackson impersonator in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Felipe evolved into several phases of the industry, including impersonating Prince, Morris Day, and Jesse Johnson. Today, Felipe has his own production company. He is an ageless artist who transcends genres, time, and space. Thank you for being on the show, Felipe. Thank you for having me. You know, this is a uh, quite of a um, nice little introduction. I like to hear uh, some of those things. I said, wow, you reminded me some things. I said, wow, I forgot I did all that. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, Felipe, please share a little bit about your career, how you got started, and a moment of truth that was a breakthrough for you professionally. Well, you know, um, I was I grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Minneapolis was a, a kind of a small local town, and we we did have a good um, musical background in Minnesota. Um, it was underground. It was it was definitely a uh, chitlin circuit at the time back back before the time. And um, I remember uh, wanting to play some music when I was in junior high. I had a, a friend from high school, and I mean junior high and high school. His name uh, to me it was always Mark Brown. Now they call him Brown Mark due to him playing in the um, Prince's band and they changed his name to Brown Mark because uh, I guess Warner Brothers would have owned his name, Mark Brown. So he changed it to Brown Mark. So he's been going by that. But we grew up in junior high and high school. We used to sit in the class and, and he was in a band, a local band called Fantasy at the time. And he used to be coming to class and we'd be sitting back. He'd be rehearsing while he was, in class, he'd be rehearsing, singing the songs and stuff. And I would sit there with him. And while he was uh, mouthing off the bass line and stuff, I would play the drum beats and stuff, you know. And we used to we used to jam in class like that. You guys are bebopping. <laughs> yeah, we used to, yeah, we used to jam. And uh, um, I was in a drum class uh, taking, like, marching band music. And I wound up being one of the best drummers in the class. And he... He approached me and said, hey, I heard you was the best drummer in the class. He said, if you get a drum set, you can be in our band. But I had a problem getting a drum set because uh, who I was staying with at the time, my oldest brother was my legal guardian. He didn't want me to have a drum set in the house. And I told him that I could keep it at Mark Brown's house. You know, his mom would have let us, you know, set up everything in their basement. And But my brother didn't allow me to get it. So that kind of botched my ability to get into the band scene back in junior high. So it kind of lost my interest to play music. I was in an orchestra band, kind of like, you know, and um, playing. And I was like the only black guy in the class. So it kind of got boring to me after, after a couple years. So I wound up quitting, you know, and then, um, and uh, there was a uh, 19, around 84, Michael Jackson was really popular, hitting the, the scene and the, uh, the pop music scene. So I started imitating Michael Jackson. Somehow I felt like I looked a little like him. Somebody walked up to me one day and hired me to do, be a Michael Jackson lookalike because I had on the shades and the glove. Mm. And they said, I Michael. They thought. So they hired me to come to an event, paid me to 
they look alike. And then from then on, I started doing some appearances, getting paid to do some shows here and there. And, Let me uh, ask you something. Did you have the, ah, I remember the spangled glove and the, red. that red leather jacket that Michael Jackson had? He kind of like pushed back the sleeves. Were you sporting that the, back in the day? Yep. I got the, I had the, uh, ah. the red jacket that he wore and beat it. Yeah. And I had like a uh kind of like a white suit and <laughs> white black and white shoes, the two tone black and white shoes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you're working at did you have a you know, remember the hair, those curls back in the <laughs> <laughs> you know, a few strands hanging down the side on one side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had it going on, and and uh, yeah, where I went, people would holler, "Michael, Michael!" And then I, uh, I'd be, I would, I'd be out in public sometime, and crowds would gather around me, and I got mobbed. I was in a um downtown in like a a, a downtown city center mall, and mm-hmm. about a hundred, a hundred young. You know, kids and teenagers surrounded me in the in the mall, in the uh, food court, and was mobbing me for <laughs> for autographs and stuff. You know? Wow, so you must have, have been his doppelganger, like for sure. Yeah. I mean, like for real. If you had yeah. people mobbing you, yeah, the security guards had to um, actually come and break it up, and they had to escort me out of the building so that it wouldn't cause a. a you know, too much of a um, mob attention in the in the mall and stuff like that. And then sometimes I'd be going somewhere, and little kids would see me and they would chase me, and I would run from, <laughs> I would run, <laughs> run around the corners, and I was. <laughs> <laughs> was oh so my funny. goodness! I would turn a corner, and they would just by the time they got around the corner, they just see a little bit of me, just the, my tail. My tail going around the corner, and then they go to the next corner and see just a little bit. It was almost like I ran around the block once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just envisioning that here you are, like you know, doing your job, and you getting like a workout in at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had kids show up at my job, and I would run out the back door and slip and run down the hall. And leave out, and they would chase me out of the out of the building down the street. <laughs> and it, you know, it had you know, it was it was kind of fun, you know. And since I was in Minneapolis, there was a little a uh, little animosity with some of the local musicians in Minneapolis because it was Prince's town. Prince was popular mm-hmm. when Purple Rain came out, so Prince wanted everything to be Prince Town. I showed up. I popped up and walked up in First Avenue, the club Prince did Purple Rain in. And I walked past Prince in the stairway and he kind of glanced at me and he kind of rolled his eyes down at me and walked past mm-hmm. me. And I was like, that looked like a little bit of resentment, uh, a little a little hate or something. Because I was just like Michael Haters. Jackson. Haters. Haters. <laughs> and, then, and then that day, that that night, that night, good. Got, yeah, you know, that night I got kicked out of the club. Wow. For, they didn't tell me why. And then I, I got kicked out and I couldn't come back in First Avenue for months and months, six months. Well, let me I ask stopped. you something, you know, that getting kicked out. Cause so it sounds to me like, you know, oh, well, let me ask you, was that a moment of truth for you? There was a breakthrough for you professionally? Because now it's kind of like now you are someone who is, obviously admired in that community, you know, and so much so that, you know, there, it sounds to me like there's a bit of, of animosity and jealousy that, you know, your, you know, your light is shining and perhaps it might cast a shadow on someone else, which may have been why it's no, no, you, you can't be here and perform. So, so, Tell me a little bit about like that moment of truth that was a breakthrough for you. Um, I wanted I I did the the imitation thing for a couple years, and 
it it sort of drew me into a level of professionalism because I would kind of uh um get deep into the to the soul of those artists and it would draw me into the that artist and I would almost become them to a certain degree. So mm. that built me up to a certain level and then I decided that I wanted to become a solo artist and be an individual and do my own thing as me. So I had come to the decision, okay, I'm going to go by Felipe and I'm going to put out some of my own music. So I started recording my own music and something told me that if I put out my own music and I tried to project myself as big as the other artists, then some of that's going to rub off on me as, you know, as my own artist. And somehow, you know, um, I kept some of the persona and it, it helped me in, um, a lot of my, um, performance. Cause once I put out my first record, first record, um, uh, and my, actually my second record was one of the records that got a lot of airplay, put a record called Can I Follow You? And mm. it, it received a lot of airplay. They played it about 10 times a day for about a year straight on KMOJ, the urban radio in Minneapolis and WRNB. And there was a couple other radio stations around the country. I sent out records to, I got showcased on radio scope showcase was Lee Bailey's radio scope showcase. That was national syndicated show on 300 black urban markets around the country. And it showcased my song in there and people kind of compared me to Prince a little bit. And, you know, I had some record label executives that I was communicating with and they were keeping their eye on me. And, you know, they were, everybody was, I was a local household name in Minneapolis. And, um, you know, I was just putting out my, um, music with a little budget. You know, I had a little popcorn and peanut budget and put my own music out. And I was one of the first few artists that tried to put their own record out, press their own vinyl and did it their self versus having a label do it and whatever. And I did it and promoted it. I put, I put on all the hats. I would, I would call radio stations, call record executives. I call um. and get my, get myself a uh, book to do showcases and, and track shows and whatever. And I went to ra- record stores and did in-store appearances and I would go to crowds and pass out my records to crowds. And it was like, you know, I did, I did what, what 20 people would have had to do in a business. Yeah. You're basically the- like really cementing your personal brand. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, and what we're going to do right now is kind of like turn the corner. We're going to talk a little bit about business and relationships okay i really thank you for sharing about your breakthrough because i really got that it really created a foundation for you know your brand so felipe we did a survey and we posed this question what would you ask someone who is successful in business about relationships so felipe here's the first question when it comes to knowing who to trust and who you can work with, what has been your biggest lesson? The biggest lesson? Mm-hmm. And knowing who to trust and who you can work with. There are so many lessons in trust because so many people have failed and fell off that it leads. It had sort of led me to the point to where I felt on a desert. Because mm. everybody else had, they did something to fail the trust. And then I would kind of move away from, I would distance myself from people that I couldn't trust. And then I would try, you know, I did a lot of, you know, um, soul searching by myself and whatnot. And I very seldom could I trust people. So I kept everybody at a distance. Somebody would have to be very They'd have to have a very good aura, clean aura for me to, mm. to trust in somebody, you know, 
And I learned, you know, I learned in business, um, when you're doing business, you know, you want to get the, the T's crossed and dot your I's and dot your mm-hmm. T's before you sign any commitment. So I made sure I learned all the stuff about the business, studying legal legalities and, and, and a lot of things about business and whatnot, you know, and hung out with some attorneys and got a lot of, uh, advice from attorneys and so I said before I get any any relationship with some deal or whatever I'm gonna have to make sure I see all the um the t's crossed and everything and they can talk a good game at first and then when it comes down to you know the proof and you show me the proof Mm -hmm. of it then that's gonna be the bottom line so um if you if you don't have a good uh sense of uh where you want to go and what you what you uh absolutely need and you have a weak sense of what you want and need some people who are full of like uh sort of empty dreams where they will they will dream about something wanting to do something but they don't know the technical part of getting to that point and you know you've ever heard of people that think that um they can just go to Hollywood and everything's gonna they're just gonna get discovered so easy. Yeah. And they're gonna run into these these promoters and these uh agents and stuff and they're just gonna um sign on with them and then get booked and and whatever doing everything. That's empty dreams, you know, unless you have the plan step by step to to plan and make all those things happen, you know, um, that. And then you had a lot of experience just from building your brand early on to be able to like envision like that next step. And it sounds to me how you would engage with, with people, how you would conduct relationships and, you know, and it helped you navigate um, the relationship, the relationships with people. And then you could, and then, and it sounds to me like you were, you're saying, you know, you, you know, you kind of like tune in to see if, okay, is this going to work out? Can I trust this person? Um, just by, you know, virtue of your experience, you know, creating it yourself and to see how, you know, you know, okay, if we part, you know, if they partner with me and are we really aligned, you know, so that's really powerful. Yeah. You have a lot of hit and miss. And then mm-hmm. each time you, you you know you have the hit and miss process, and every time you miss, then you go back to the lab and tweak it. Yeah. For next time to make sure you don't miss, you know. It's yeah, learning. you're basically yeah continuous improvement and and growing as you go. Learn from so, mistakes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> on your path as an entrepreneur, have you encountered any naysayers or saboteurs? And if so, were you surprised by who they were? Um, no, because it was almost well. There was my f- my feeling was I had, you know, early on, I didn't really have a lot of people I trusted that were close in my circle. You know, I had like two friends, and we were roommates, and we were some people said we were like soulmates because we were all alike in so many ways. It was like mm-hmm. a three way circle and other than that outside of that there was not too many people i could trust so if somebody did something and there were a lot of haters that tried to sabotage things and um i already kind of felt that there was going to be a lot of haters and i learned how to uh ignore the haters and continue to to go on you know like when i I was studying um modeling and acting and they taught you how to you know in a certain um, condition of professionalism, you would be professional regardless of what the situation was. And you learned how to be strong through whatever the situation was. So I learned a certain way of professionalism in the, in the midst of hate, you continue to do, go straight ahead with, with uh, your mission. You don't allow the hate to uh, detour you and stop you. So I learned to just, kind of take a blind eye the haters and just keep on moving forward and I knew that it was like I knew they were there 
I knew they were they were coming at me and I knew they were um hating and I just kept moving forward. And then after I surpassed, you know, and hit my goal, reached my goal and surpassed what they they thought they were gonna uh slow me down or stop me. And when they see me succeed, they were all of a sudden they were like uh it was almost like they wanted to join the bandwagon. You know? <laughs> yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is really like, oh, you know, no, you're you're not gonna make it. And then as soon as you then you blew up, and yeah. all of a sudden, oh, hey, you know, uh, remember me from back in the day? You know, I was your buddy way back then. And you're like, uh, who? Uh, and you, your name is what? Your name? And you, who are you? And you are. <laughs> But you know what you you know what you said early on is like it sounds like you had like you had that core um group of friends and you guys were all aligned and you just stayed true to your core circle, like the people that enabled and empower you enabled and empowered each other. And so it really didn't matter what the naysayers or the haters were saying because you know, you had each other's back and you know and you guys are working to succeed so it really didn't matter it's like okay you know say what you want you know here's what we're creating and then all of a sudden now everybody wants to be your friend but it's like you know you know who your people are you know who your tribe is right yeah so thank you Felipe we have another question coming right up for you okay so our next question from the survey is from your experience, what mindset is needed to balance romantic and business relationships where you and the other person are empowered? Um, there has to be a balance, and you have to be able to cater to another person's um, emotional and physical, uh, you know, if you have to give them a certain amount of your attention and it has to be balanced to give them their emotional and as well as their physical uh, um, attention. And then your business, you have to be, still be able to maintain your business so that your business doesn't fall off. So if, and if you can include them somehow in your business mm-hmm. and get interested in participating and then they feel as though they're part of it. It gives them a uh, feeling of um, like they're involved and they're part of something. Then, then it can connect holistically more. You know, then you have more of a holistic situation. Cause some some situations you can be in a relationship with someone, and they have no interest in your business or your you know whatever your business or hobby or whatever uh, your interests are, they have no no uh, interest in your interests. And that can be a problem. That, that can be a problem. And then you'll find yourself trying to work with that, and then you'll wind up spending and committing more than half of your percentage of your, your business to try to please appease that person in a relationship. So you'll be spending most of the time trying to appease them for the for the uh lack of uh interest that they have for you for your uh interest or career or whatever. Let me ask you, so this lack of interest in what you're interested in, could it be that they there's like maybe a feeling of competition, like they're compete they're competing with these interests that you have? Is could yeah. that be the source of the yeah? Could that be the source of that conflict? Yeah, and sometimes it's just that a person. Some people have closet dreams. I mean, closet visions where mm-hmm. they don't they they don't see um, a big picture. They see a small picture, and they're like in a tunnel, and they've never been anywhere. They've never done anything major themselves. And when you try to do something, they seem like they don't really want you to do anything because if you do something big, it's, they feel like you're going to leave them or you're going to be so big that you'll be bigger than them and it won't give them any attention. 
So they will sometimes actually try to hold you down from even putting in enough uh, enough work to, to get successful. Sometimes they will actually try to hold you down. So then you just be stuck staying with them in a, you know, like they don't want you to get off the block. So they'll Yeah, hold you'll you. both be small. Yeah, they'll hold you by your ankles. You're trying to leave the block or something. You know, you, you say, oh, I got to go um, do something and I got to go to such and such a city and do do a event or you know meet somebody or do a show or something or whatever or expand to to do something and it seems like they won't, don't want you to go they'll hold you back and then you'll just be sitting there on the block looking at each other while other folks are traveling around the world making things happen and you know there's a keyword called empowerment that you know what you just described it sounds like would be missing you know so you know, having that other person, like, really interested in empowering you and what you're up to and what you're committed to making happen in your life. And and then you would, you know, the, the feeling would be mutual, you know, for them, like, to empower them and what they're up to. So it makes a huge difference that to have, you know, and I'm, I'm saying this from my own experience because I'm married and I... um you know, had a business and, you know, my husband, you know, he got involved in my business. So it was like a great suggestion you made. He, he, uh, you know, did a lot of the financials for my company mm-hmm. and for us, we were building what we call the empire. Like he was support, you know, and that was his, his way to support me and what I was up to. And I was supporting him in his career and we continue to do that. Now we have these, what we call, um, you know, sessions where we're like, okay, what's going on with the empire that we're building? And so it's the whole business piece is a, a big part of our relationship because it's about us and what we're creating and, you know, and what he's creating. We've got, I call it, I have my life, he has his life, and we have our lives, and we are working on that trinity to create the empire. So yes. it, you're absolutely right. It makes a huge difference. Yes. You said it, yes. you said it just uh, exactly as it is. It's a uh, trinity. And two people form a trinity. That's that's deep. So you wonder, okay, what's the third element? Third element is the unity of you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and I think you're talking about, you know, how people have kind of like some kind of dream. They they have a vision for how the life looks for themselves and they don't and they envision you in it. But you're just an actor, not like both of you having a leading role. (laughs) They see you as the supporting role instead of like, okay, we're both the, you know, lead, you know, like he's the male lead in my show and I'm the female lead and together yeah. this is our show right yeah. so so with that you know we're going to take a moment and listen to a track that you produced on a segment of the show we call Groove Moves yeah. so DJ let's hear Sunshine Blue Sky Everything gon' be alright. 19, one of the hottest that I ever seen. We dodged the bullet, but it was quick clean all day long. We had the sunshine, 95 and up. We had fun times, I never give up being in hot Atlanta. Coming from Minneapolis, it was a cold Santa. But if you're living here, you gotta get used to it. Weigh your options and let Bruce Bruce hit it. Never be down, cause everything is on the up and up. Quiet is kept, you got a dream just to toughen up. Make life do what it do when you have everything. Manifest the sun and the moon to make your heart sing. When you feel happy, it makes your world shine. Radiating optical visions that your mind design. Who needs to ask you why? Cause we have baby heat. No need to ask you why, cause you create be sunshine. Blue sky. Sunshine, everything gon' be alright. Sunshine, blue sky, sunshine, everything gon' be alright. Sunshine, blue sky, 
So is this track in the groove? I say the track is in the groove. The track is very inspiring. And in a way, the track is very meditative. That's exactly what you I know, was. It's like, yeah, like in this really kind of like a, a, a high spirited type of meditation. Because I was like tuning in. I was tuning in. <laughs> I'm like, Yeah. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I actually wrote uh, a verse of that song uh, in summer of 19, I mean, 2019. And then mm-hmm. uh, I finished the second verse the summer of 2020. So throughout that process. And I wrote the music about between about four or five years ago. I started writing the music. And it was just sitting there. The music was just sitting there and I was wondering what should I do with it and I would just listen to it every now and then and just think what what I wanted to do with it and I couldn't think of what I wanted to do with it up until oh, like 2019 and I started on it one verse and did the other verse and um and I said wow this is gonna be a beautiful summertime song and I'm here in Atlanta where it's sunshine um uh nine months out of the the, the year or 10 months out of the year even throughout uh, January and February, it was still sunshine and somewhat sometime warm temperatures, you know. But and I wanted to say, you know, the the sun itself is a healing um, mechanism in the universe. Getting mm-hmm. the sunshine the rays and everything, giving you vitamin D and solar connection to your to your pineal gland, and um, it almost can actually send like psychological signals to your mind i used to go out and stand you know like when i was in minneapolis i used to go out and stand under the sun 
I was working a job and I'd take a break and I'd go write some songs and just stand under the sun. And it seemed like it would just give me all this insight to write all these lyrics. All these lyrics would just come to me. And I'd go back in to work 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. And I would came up with this beautiful song lyric. And then I would even have the music in my head and I would like memorize the music in my head till I got home and record the music and say, wow, that was a beautiful song. I created some beautiful songs, like standing in the sunshine, you know? So that's something I always had a good relationship with is the sun. Love the sun ever since I was a little kid. Mm. So let me ask you, Felipe, what was something that surprised you about creating Sunshine Blue Sky? That surprised me? Mm-hmm. Um, is, is that, um, what surprised me, I've, I've ran into some people recently and I ran into this lady. She said she sings gospel song and she pulled up one of her songs and she said she had a song where she was singing same thing, sunshine. She was singing a sunshine song and I ran into a couple other people and then I seen there's a host on your show. Sunshine, right? Isn't isn't it uh, sunshine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do have a host. Yeah, and and uh, I just said, well, you know, this song will really hit smack dab in the middle of the universe because it's uh, it's grounded in the center of the universe, and it's not mm-hmm. like it's not like something that's so odd. You know how some people write some songs that are so odd you can barely understand. <laughs> yeah. Yes, some, indeed. They were getting something off their chest that they had deep inside them, but it was so odd. Nobody could understand it, figure it out. It's like, just, you know, it's, but this song here is uh, very universal, very universal. Yeah, and, and and for me, it, it sounds to me like it's just the divine speaking. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the words were just coming out of me. And mm-hmm. once I wrote it and said what I said, I don't change anything. I just let what comes out of me come out of me. And then I look at it later and I go, wow, that was divine. Mm, beautiful. So, Felipe, are you ready for another survey question? Yes. Okay. Our next question from the survey is, what are three pitfalls you've seen people fall into when it comes to balancing their romantic, family, or community relationships while working to have a successful business? You said the pitfalls of balancing the romantic, family, and And business? And community relationships or community relationships while working to have a successful business. So basically, kind of like, you know, the, you, you know, your romantic relationships, relationships with your family or relationships in community, you know, friends and, you know, associates, you know, while you're working to have a successful business, what are the pitfalls you've seen people fall into when they're working to balance those relationships? Um. Well, sometimes they allow friends, family, community, or whatever. Sometimes they allow people to manipulate their business that are not qualified to to make those uh, type of uh, business decisions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they allow somebody to, to manipulate things in the business in their business that are not qualified to. Uh, yeah, like they know what's best. What you they're gonna tell you what you need to be doing, and some of them have never had a business before. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I, you know, been there, done that one. <laughs> yeah. Like, how can you tell somebody what um, what type of uh, product that they should be marketing? If if you did some research on a product and you chose that product because you seen that there was promising uh, um, returns on using that product or marketing that product, and somebody else comes just because they personally may not like that product, 
them personally, and them being one out of millions, they personally don't like it. And you did some marketing research and showed that there were certain um, millions of people that do that product all the time and have done it, you know, use it or whatever. And they try to say, oh, you shouldn't do that project, product or whatever, whatever, just because they personally don't like it. You know, those are things that that you have to uh, watch out for. And, you know, yeah, there are people that just won't get behind what you're doing because they may personal have a personal thing against it. And you don't need that uh, getting in the way of your your business, you know, because a lot of things, you know, how they say this is business, not personal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. Keep the business sometime and not let the personal stuff um, affect it. And, um, you know, that's that's why you see some real deep, hard core um, business people that are rude and crude. They seem rude and crude to their friends, family, because their friends and family will come in and say, Oh, let me get this for free. Let me get this a discount on that. Let me get this. Oh, and that, yeah. and that, and this and that. You know, and then that person will not cater to their, uh, to their, um, request. And I see. mean, you know, we know, we all know all the celebrity stories about, you know, um, how, you know, a lot of these uh, celebrities have, like, um, you know, bought their family and friends, like, cars and homes and, you know, free this, free that. Yeah. And, you know, and then, of course, when the gravy train ends, <laughs> then they're gone. Yeah. It's like, you know, it was like there's just no respect for what it took to create that. And in a lot of cases, no support, but I want to reap the benefits of your creative endeavors. And I have something to say about your creative endeavors. And I want to, you know, and I want to benefit from it. But when it comes time to like, okay, what, what, how, you know, enabling and empowering me to, to do these things, you know, there, there's, there's that. And I think a lot of it, like kind of what we talked about earlier about the romantic relationships. A lot of times people have their own vision, their self interest, and they're not looking at it. What, how can I enable and empower you? How, you know, and then you're looking at how you can enable and empower the other person. And then together, what could we create in our relationship? And it doesn't have to be romantic, but it's like, you know, with siblings, with parents, with friends, with, you know, people out in the community, you know, like having, something that's mutually beneficial and having a really great symbiotic relationship. Yeah. You know, that just makes a difference. So we're all, everyone wins. Right. No one's left out. Yeah. Cause when a team comes together, there's no I in team and uh, everybody pulls the weight forward to move forward. Nobody is, is um, pulling backwards. Then that's when a team can, successfully win but you can't have those uh those crabs in the barrel that's that's, that's one right thing. eliminate the crabs in the barrel syndrome well we have one final question All right. there's a lot going on if you had a magic wand and could change one thing what would it be whoa now that's a <laughs> that's <laughs> Ooh, that's a big question. Okay. One thing with a magic wand. Mm-hmm. Ah, probably, probably You're would, the wizard. Probably would change perceptions so that perceptions could see clear. And if everybody's perceptions could see clear, there'd be a whole lot less waste, wasteful energies going on. Because with deceptions and everything going on, people spending lifetimes going down the wrong road because of some deception or perception. And it's wasting, a lot of people wasted away lives. A lot of things have been wasted away. In this Amen, trip. brother. Yeah, things. so true. So it's really, uh, what I'm hearing is like for people to really have the ability to see what's so. Like what's really so versus their 
interpretation about what they're saying because the yeah. interpretation is what they perceive as what's so a reality when in fact that's just their perception it's not really what's real like they're right. getting to what's real like racism is perceptions you know you got the people that think that they're superior and their racist views and it's really not you know it's it's really they're really not you know and then when when um nature and 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 whatnot comes to prove everything you know when nature and science and reality sets in to prove it shows that their perceptions and all their beliefs were 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 wrong but they they got behind that perception and they they stuck with it they said this is my story and I'm sticking with it you know and you got people chasing after uh pipe dreams and you got drug addicts thinking that that drug is going to give them take them to the top and they for some reason I don't know what it is but somebody would think that if they keep on smoking the crack pipe that that's going to take them to the top <laughs> I don't know what it con- is con- context is decisive yeah addicted to it you know or whatever you know it could be smoking cigarettes or whatever thinking that they could tell you smoke a cigarette it's going to make their lungs better Brother, or something. you're about to make me break out my Curtis Mayfield album and throw <laughs> on Freddie's Dead oh <laughs> Woo. people going around killing people thinking that they can go and kill kill people and it's going to get them hits on, on Instagram <laughs> people doing some of the dumbest craziest things and they think that it's it's good, you know? So if all of that was eliminated and eradicated, just think if you had a planet where all the the beings could see everything, like you said, see things the way it really is, like what's really going yeah. on. See, see everything. You know, Basically, you don't even have to go up and ask somebody what are they doing, what's going on, or this and that. You just already know it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like seeing, so, so for what I, what I'm getting out of what you're saying is that if, you know, we're all part of God, we're, we're all God's children and we're all part of that same family. So in really essentially you and I are really one. There is no separation. There's no separation. And our perceptions create that. Right. And really, in a way, we don't really have to, with that, we don't have to really deal with that, with right. that reality. Because if we did, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be over there destroying another person because that essentially that, that's a piece of me over there. Right. And over there and over there and over there because we're all part of this one big divine family right like like why are we fighting wars if we're all the same family you know somebody thinks that that uh country or that entity over there is is different or is is uh, the perceptions as you kind of coming back to your what you said before with your magic wand it's like if you could just it's perception i perceive x and therefore, it's real. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know how people go somewhere, they're driving, and they get into a, a, a traffic, um, what you call it, um, angry angry in traffic. What do you call it? Uh, road rage. Road rage. And then next thing you know, it's somebody starts shooting, and they start shooting at each other. Now, if, if it would have been... Uh, if their minds had have been right, they would have said, oh, that's okay, you know, and they would have just let it go and kept on going. They would have waved at the other person, and they would have waved back, and they would have kept it moving, kept, you know. But instead, their anger gets to, gets to the, you know, to the worst of them, and, and then they don't realize what the uh, outcome could be, you know, after you start shooting at somebody. You know, now you're, now you're wanted, you know, now you're criminal for shooting or whatever you know and if you kill them now you uh 
now you're a um a feast in the in the in the jail system well i'm gonna say i love your i love how you're wanting to use your magic wand and this has been a really really great and enlightening conversation mm-hmm. yeah the way saturdays should be uh. <laughs> Yeah, the really way every day should be that we have really enlightening and empowering conversations with each other. <clears throat> so thank you, Felice, for sharing your wisdom. You're welcome. So appreciate it. So, yes. Felipe, how can yes. our listeners learn more about you and follow you online? Okay. Um, well, I have, I have, uh, a lot of my music is available on cdbaby.com. I have uh, about four or five albums available on cdbaby.com slash Felipe. Um, and I also and let, have... Let's spell, let's spell that Felipe out. That's P-H-I-L-L-I-P-E. Yes, P-H-I-L-L-I-P-E. And... And this song, uh, Sunshine Blue Skies, that's on, um, distributed through Distro Kid, Distro Kid, and it's on iTunes and Apple, um, all the different, um, platforms. Uh, um, there's, uh, let's see, uh, when I, I contacted you through, um, Music Submit submitted, the, um, my information to, to your station. And they did some promotion. They were doing the promotion to promote to different um, stations, radio stations and blog magazines and all that. Um, I'm on Facebook at Felipe Washington. And I'm on Twitter. Uh, on Twitter, let's see. Uh, I can't uh, can't remember the exact... Uh, page but uh, uh i think it's felipe three on twitter but um if you follow me on cdbaby.com if you go to cdbaby.com there should be some uh contact information that can connect to other social media sites i have and that's cd baby i say cd baby because i've started uh distributing my music on cd baby since since pretty much they started it started around uh, 1999, so I actually got on CD Baby in 2000, and they started distributing music, selling digital downloads since then, and and they would also sell your your um, music hard copy in their warehouse. And they'd ship it, drop ship it. If somebody bought it, they'd ship it out, and they were one of the first big, you know, in, independent companies doing that. And um, when I first started with that. They barely had any categories for too many black artists, black music. <laughs> I actually had to get them to create a spoken word category and because they had pop, so many different pop categories and rock categories. And then they barely had hip hop. I think I had to go under hip hop and then, um, then that started. When it, when they first had hip hop, they only had a handful of hip hop artists. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it, it sounds like, you know, you were, you, you again, being the, you know, pioneer in branding yourself that you, you create a space for yourself out there. And so, so thank you for sharing about CD Baby. And, you know, listeners, that's where you can find Felipe. And that's P-H-I-L-L-I-P-E. Yes. So Felipe, thank you so much. It was an honor to have you as our guest. Oh, yes. Thank you for having me on and asking me those questions. Digging deep into my... Dug deep yeah, into thanks my for, yeah, thanks for sharing. Thanks for digging deep and sharing. So, you know, it was a really, really inspiring conversation. I am Nicole W. And oh. you have been listening to Men, Relationships, and other fables. Until next time. All right.